So we're looking at my dashboard here and as you can see I've already switched the bulbs for these gauges over here into LED lights but these other ones, this one and the speedometer and also these ones I've not been done anything with yet so today I'm gonna mount these LED lights uh, these LED lights I got from eBay Oh, I just ordered some over there and they're coming in packed like this with everything for both setups of the instrument cages. So in order to access the bulbs behind your speedometer and your tachometer, uh, there's a couple of different screws you need to know about. The entire system is covered by this plastic over here, this one. And you also have this one as a separate one, which goes over the indicator lights. But you need to remove this one and an, and an identical one on the other side together with these ones over here and another identical one over that, on that side over here then you can remove the plastic cover and for the one in the center here you also have two of them sitting over here these screws are Phillips heads so I've now removed the uh, two top screws and the right one is actually a little bit longer than the left one. Now this should be just to pry off but I find that this one for your indicator lights is actually lying on top of the other one so I have to remove this one as well. And as you can see it's a little bit tricky to reach into those screws up there so if you would do this yourself you better choose a shorter screwdriver so that you can avoid this angle that I have here. So once you have all the screws on the top out, this actually comes loose, all of it. And as you can see here, this is one of the panels. And this one is made out of metal. And it slides out like this. Then the other panel just slides down. So this one comes up very easily. And apparently there are two light bulbs behind this one and also two behind this one. So to access these ones we have to remove the screws up here and there's another one down there. And then on this one we have one there and one there. But to be able to reach in to the sockets of these ones, you have to remove this one to be the yellow cluster holder loose. We also have these ones underneath. This one, this one, that one and that one for this yellow piece of plastic. So I'm going to start removing all these ones and show you what it looks like when they're off. So as you see now here, Oh, this one down here is really tricky. This is a Torx 15 to reach and that made me actually remove this one and There's one screw here and one on the other side and if you remove this one It may be of interest to note that there's actually Another lamp over here, which you might want to change once you're at it I don't have this one here with me today, so I'm going to do this later. But this way I will be able to reach this one with the screwdriver. Here you see how these ones on the bottom side come loose very easily. But as it's plastic, remember not to turn the screwdriver the wrong direction because then you will probably crack this plastic holder for your gauges. Now to remove this entire piece, there's actually only one restriction that you have. On this side it's completely loose and behind here there's a circuit board that's not held together by anything. But down here on this side you might have some buttons. In my case I have a switch here and that one I can just remove. But here this one which is the heater to the rear window this one is attached so you need to grab in here in behind and loosen it and 
can't do that while holding the camera, but I'll show you how it looks like when I got it off. And this is the piece that I'm talking about, which I need to get off to get all the plastic part out. And that's it. So now at this stage, this entire piece should come loose. The last time I was down here, I was struggling with getting this white piece of plastic off. And I believe that if I had connected, disconnected, these two down here, I would be able to get it off. Actually remove it from the two screws I have down there, the one there and the other two that are over there. But that was a mistake and what you actually have to struggle with here is that you have the harness is coming out on this side and it's attaching in here to light up these bulbs over here as well. And these bulbs, they are the same as the one you have over here for the indicating which gear you're on. So, and if you're looking at this one, they actually come out one by one just by pulling them straight out. So, you can see this here. So this is a bulb that you don't need to attach from the back of the, this plastic. So I'm just going to screw this one on again here. And while well, I replace these ones later, and I'm going to stick to replacing only the bulbs that we have under the tachometer and the speedometer. So you see, I just push it in there, and that sits there while well, you have to put a little bit of pressure. But once you're at this stage, if you have foggy screens, which you will see if you turn on the lights, you don't see it really down here. But um, I polished up the other ones, I showed that in another video. These ones, so they became shiny and clear. Maybe you can see that from the video here. Then this is the time to do this. And, but you have to get the tachometer out and the speedometer out. And I'm going dis to disconnect these ones and fix them as well. Now, as I said, I disconnected the screws up here and there. And this is actually quite a good room here to get the whole thing out. You see, it comes out like this. And it's in these sockets that you put your new LED lights. Uh, and in between there, you see the green, yellow and the red wires going down in the hole. That one should have a disconnector, which is a fast disconnect, which I'm going to remove now. Yeah, so it had one of these disconnects here, and here you see it coming out. It can actually be difficult to reach that one. There's quite a long core down coming out here, but mine was stuck down and snug in behind the main harness in this hole here. So I had to reach in on the left side and grab it deep down in there and kind of wiggle it out. And then this one comes out. And here we go. Now it's entire pieces out and this is what the quick connect looks like now that when you actually are about to remove the this one the speedometer you will find that there's a resistance in somewhere and that's your speedometer cable that goes through your firewall into the compartment for your engine so you need to pull it out a little bit and then push with the cable from the other side. I'll walk around and show you where it is. So, you see, this is the cable that runs here. This one goes down here and connects. I don't know if you see it, I'm shaking it down. That connects back to your transfer case. So you need to give it a little bit of slack and then push it through. And it's just a rubber seal there, so on the top here, so that's there. I moved it in one centimeter, about or one. Well, I think I got it in about two and a half, one inch. And now this is the second time I'm out here, and well, I found that you basically have to, you have to give, it, take all the slag or that loose cable you have to get it in there to be able to get your hand in through the hole so that you can disconnect the electrical parts as well. So here you can see the back and this little plastic piece there. Oh, you see that the plastic piece there, that's the disconnect. And that one you just squeeze on both sides. And in there, yeah, right there is the disconnect. I'll try to zoom in on that. 
there you have it and here you see the disconnect after I moved it and as you can see here it's like two well you just press on each side um, if you well think about it horizontally and it just comes out and there's some hinges that are hanging on this one that I'm pointing on with my finger over there that's very easily done this and here you see how it all came off um, the this one is only held, held in its place by one little piece and that's the one you see over there and you just push that tab down while you're pushing it out and it comes loose very easily what I can see here is that somebody before me they put normal grease in this one this one if you want to lubricate your speedometer cable you should use either graphite or white lithium grease and that should preferably go down in here somehow you can see the regular grease somebody put in there so if you have a vibrating cable or a vibra vibrating needle then you might want to clean this one out and then re-lubricate it well so here you see both of the gauges and if you want to do something about these before you actually mount them back then you can use one of these polywatch this is a polish compound that you can get at any watch store for well they use it for polishing plexiglass on watches and you just need small droplets of this and then you rub it in with some of these cotton swabs and these ones are typically the ones that ladies use for cleaning their face um, and then you can get the old well the shine back on these gauges and I don't see if you see that but this one is well it, it is scratched all over and this one has a little bit less on it but quite a considerable amount of dirt there so I'm going to remove the dirt and then I'm going to polish them back into the original shine So I'm now mounting everything back again and uh, there's a couple of things that you could benefit from knowing is that you have this core back there and behind you really do yourself a favor if you actually try to pull the harness out as much as possible and that is that orange and black cable because you need to plug in your speedometer at this stage so that you see that the old lights or I mean when you change to the to the LED lights that you put them in the right direction because there are two ways they can go either they shine or they don't shine but they and the LED lights are polarized so if they don't shine you just need to turn them around I've got the light on now here and um, I'm just gonna take this one off and that one off and then plug in the LED lights and here is what it looks like this one can go two ways in to the socket and you just have to try it out at this point I pull them halfway in to the sockets and I check that they actually work both of them uh, you don't want to put them all the way down in, in into the socket when you're testing them out and you have it connected here in the back because if you put them all the way into the socket it's very difficult to get them out again and you might damage the leads in themselves so connect it in the back put them halfway in test it and then you push them all the way in and to get the speedometer cable back in place you just have to do the same thing, you push on both sides, keep it lined horizontally and um, you will hear a firm click sound when it hooks up in the right position. Well now the first one is done and the same procedure goes for the second one but this is what it becomes like if you install this. Yeah, it's a bit brighter than the regular bulbs that I had from the beginning and then I can turn it down and possibly this is the well most obvious difference is that it becomes the gradual change becomes significantly less in the illumination of the dashboard which you used to have on your normal bulbs it becomes more abrupt but you can turn it down to about there and then it will brighten up a bit well here's a better view of 
difference you get. So let's see, zoom in on that. So this is what the LED lights look like. And there on the other side you have the speedometer, the bulbs. So we compare that there to this. So this is the LED lights and those are the old bulbs. Now these ones have five times longer lifetime or life endurance than these ones. So with the new LED lights it's actually a good idea to change them from the old original ones.